Hi, my name is Trevor Lauren Stuhl. I am the founder and leader of Zimbabwe for Jesus, an organization that is based in Harare, Zimbabwe, and a ministry that is totally committed to the fulfilling of the Great Commission in this nation. Not long ago, I was sent links to some videos on YouTube that were expounding a doctrine that was new to me. And whilst there were some wonderful Bible truths that were spoken about in these videos, and uh, truths that blessed my heart, what concerned me was the way that these truths were being applied and the fact that many other great and fundamental truths of Scripture were being denied even as these great and wonderful truths were being expounded. And the result was a doctrine that I believe is not accurate according to Scripture and that it has the potential to be destructive with regards to the faith of God's people. And so I thought that it would be good for me just to do a series of teachings examining from Scripture the claims that are being made in these videos. We need to realize that deception always has truth in it. When Satan came to Eve way back in the garden in the very beginning, he didn't just come to Eve and just tell her a bunch of lies. He mixed in truth with those lies. And in fact, he spoke more truths than he did lies. He only gave Eve one lie. And that's when he said to Eve, you will surely not die. But the rest of what Satan said to Eve was actually true. And so we see Satan taking truths and relating them to Eve, but at the same time denying a very fundamental truth. And that was that if she ate of that tree, she would not die. This is the way Satan deceives us even today. He takes truths from the gospel, truths from the word of God, and he uses them to get our attention. He uses them to make us think that what is being said is good and is right. But as he's doing so, he mixes in lies that deny fundamental truths and actually lead us astray. And this is what I believe these videos and the teaching, the doctrine that is contained within these videos is actually doing. And so what I want to do today is, as we start out on this journey, is just to examine and outline uh, the, the, the claims, the teachings, the fundamental teachings that we, uh, I heard and found in these videos. So let me just outline them to you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a series of videos that will follow this one that will examine these claims, these teachings against Scripture. And I'm sure that you're going to be able to see where the lie is um, and how the truth and the lies have been mixed, to, to mixed together to create uh, something that is not true, something that is not good. So let's have a look at what is being taught in these videos. The first thing that comes out in these videos as I listen to them is a, a teaching that declares and proclaims that basically, essentially, humanity is good. And the reason humanity is good is because Christ, who is our creator, is good. And he is in all that he created. And so we as people, according to these videos, should be able to stand and look in the mirror and say, I am good. I'm good because I was created by someone who is good. They say in these videos that man's problem is simply to do with a distorted view of God and of himself that he has held. So the, the, the great problem of man is actually a, a perception, a, a perception. It's, it's what we have perceived about God and about ourselves. They say that sin is having a distorted view of God and not primarily breaking God's law, which is the traditional definition of what sin is. They say it is actually a distorted view of God. That's what sin is. And they say that the consequences of sin are the hardships and the misery and the chaos we experience in life. And they say that these are simply the result of our wrong belief about God's attitude towards sin and its effect on our relationship with Him. Let me expound a little bit on this so that you can understand what I'm saying. Sin, they say, does not result in any change of attitude in God towards us. So in other words, if we sin, God is still the same. He still has the same attitude towards us regardless of what we do. They imply that God is not angry because of our sin and that he has never been angry because of sin and he will never be so. 
And so in saying that, they actually deny the wrath of God for sinners. They say that sin does not separate us from God. They say that the separation we feel when we have sinned is just in our minds and is not a reality as far as God is concerned. They say and teach that all humanity, regardless of whether we believe or not, are already in Christ and are therefore partakers in everything that pertains to Christ simply because he created us all. They will quote 2 Corinthians 5.14, which says that he died for all and therefore all died. And they will say that when Jesus died, all died. Or everyone in creation, every, every human being that has ever lived died when Jesus died because he is the creator of everyone. They continue to say when he rose, all people rose. When he ascended into heaven, all people ascended because everyone, whether they believe or not, is in Christ and is united to Christ and he represents all. They say that the whole world, both believers and unbelievers, is therefore already justified, forgiven and made righteous simply on the, on the, on the basis that Jesus Christ, the creator and sustainer of us all, died for us all. And they say that this is a fact. They say this is an indisputable fact that all people have been justified already and that unbelief, all that it does is stop people experiencing it. So what they're teaching is that all people have the same perfect relationship with God, regardless of whether they believe or not. Their only difference, according to what they are saying, is in the experience of it. They are teaching that faith has no bearing on one's standing or relationship with God. It only has a bearing on one's experience of it. In other words, it doesn't matter whether someone believes or doesn't believe the relationship that they have in reality with God is the same. And the only difference is that those who believe will experience it, whereas those who don't believe will not experience it. They continue to say that since no one is separated from God, which is what they're teaching, or has ever been separated from God, there is no need for anyone to find a way to God. And they totally reject the idea of men seeking a way to God or of preachers telling people a way to Him. They say that is wrong because in the very first place, no one is excluded and no one is separated. So how can you come to someone who's already included, someone who has never been separated from God, someone who already has a relationship with God, and try and tell him a way back to God? They say that faith is not a way to God. They say that faith is simply an acceptance of the fact that we are already in relationship with God. They say that repentance is not a way to God. It is simply accepting the fact that we have a relationship with God, that we were never separated from Him and that He has never been angry over what we have done. So what they're saying in essence is that faith and repentance is rejecting the idea that religion has put in man's mind about sin separating us from God and accepting the view which they are teaching that our wrongdoing has not affected our relationship with God. That's how they define faith and that's how they define repentance. They say that the gospel is about God reaching out to us and showing us that we are one with Him, that we are in Christ and that we have never been separated from Him. And so, according to them, preaching the gospel is not about telling people a way back to God. Its aim is to get people to believe the fact that they already have a relationship with God so that they can experience that oneness with Him. They claim that the whole mission of Christ was to take away our darkness. And when they, when they say darkness, what they are defining darkness to be is our misconception about what God is like, how He thinks and feels about us, and our false belief that we have been separated from Him. So they say that Jesus came to rescue us from that darkness and to bring us into the light. And according to them, the light is a true perception of God and His love for us and the fact that we are already in relationship with Him and have always been so. And they say that the reason that Jesus came to bring us out of this wrong perception, this darkness, 
and to bring us into the light, this true perception of God and our relationship with Him is so that we can experience it. And so they say that all Jesus did was for this purpose, even including His death on the cross. They say Jesus didn't die because of the wrong things we've done. He was not punished on our behalf so that we could be forgiven for doing them. Rather, He died to give us a true perception of God and to show us what God is really like. In other words, the cross dealt more with our perception of God rather than with our disobedience to God. That's what they are teaching. They also come to the place, and this is where this teaching has to lead to, where they say heaven and hell are not literal places. They are just an ongoing extension of our experience of God and our knowledge of the facts of the gospel. In other words, what they're saying is people are in hell right now. People that do not believe or know these facts that we have a relationship with God, people that believe that they are separated from Him are in hell right now. They don't need to go to a place to experience hell. They're already experiencing it simply because they do not have uh, an experience of a relationship, the relationship with God that they have. And they say the opposite is true of people who do believe these truths, the, the, the fact that we have a relationship with God, and they are therefore experiencing it, and they are in heaven right now. So they, they deny the fact that there is a need for a heaven and a hell that is a literal place. To them, the torment of hell is not God punishing anyone, but it is simply them not experiencing a relationship with God. And to them, the blessing of heaven is not being in a place where there are no tears and where there are streets of gold. But heaven to them is simply experiencing that relationship with God. So these are the things that they teach. And uh, we want to go into these things and begin to examine them and uh, look at them in the light of Scripture. Uh, in the next uh, videos that will follow this, the series of videos that will follow this. So I leave you here today with the blessing of the Lord and look forward to seeing you again in the next session.